Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. Uh, this is our video blog number 21, reporting in on our weekly progress for the week of July 15th, 2013, as we continue to move forward and our purpose and our goal to teach people how to create a better world for the highest good of all. And so, uh, as is the format for these blogs, I'm going to go through a quick update, just a bullet point of everything that we accomplished. I'm going to go into details of what's happening behind the scenes. And as always, if you'd like to see more information, um, you can click on the link in the YouTube description there, which will take you to a written blog, which has images and things like that that go along, as well as links to all the content on our website, etc., to uh, go into as much depth as you'd like about everything that we're creating. So, which as an open source and free sharing organization is an immense amount of information because we're chronicling every aspect of everything that we do and open source project launch blueprinting it, meaning we're creating not just open source content, but open source content purposed to launch additional projects, to create duplications, versions, or additional iterations of everything that it is that we're doing. So um, this is our progress update number 21, weekly progress update number 21. This last week, uh, we continue to move forward on Sego Center 3D. Now what we've done, and I'll include some pictures of this, we've got the openings that are in the different domes there, removing the different sections there, so you can start looking inside the domes. There's three of them. You have to see the image to really get an idea of what it is that I'm talking about. But we've added in the second floor walls to the living dome. Um, and so now we've just got to cut those off. You'll see in the picture what that looks like and trim those down and get those sized properly. But we've added in pretty much all the walls for the all three structures are now done. Um, we've got the cupola roof finished in Revit. And so we've got to transfer that over into SketchUp. But now that it's done in Revit, I can show you a picture of what that looks like thanks to Andrew Sidera. Really great work. And Carl Harris is doing phenomenal work on all the walls and everything for the Sego Center. Um, and, uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Now, this week now what we're doing is we're starting to put in the appliances and those types of details in the Sego Center. And we should be just a couple weeks out from putting in windows and then we can texture it. We've also uh, spent a lot of time talking about what's gonna be grown in the central protected area of the Sego Center. So those are things that have happened this week. Um, also, this week we finished our vermiculture shower design page, so which is the 2.0 shower and vermiculture uh, bathroom designs for the Earthbag Village, and that page is now up on the website, and that was created also because we welcomed a new partner to the team. Erin Ponte has joined our team, and Erin Ponte Landscape Design, and she's going to be working on our gray water systems. So designing out the complete all-natural gray water processing system that will service the entire Earthbag Village. And I'll talk a little bit more about the designs of that system after I get through this quick update. Uh, from a support standpoint, our Facebook fan page hit 5,800 fans. And our um, one community, which is one community fans at Facebook.com. And our uh, one community updates, Facebook.com forward slash one community updates page hit 1,000 fans. And so that's pretty cool. Just a building. We always appreciate everybody sharing everything that we're doing, the people that are tapping into us and are interested in how to create a better world and want to follow our pro progress. Man, just liking our pages is really supportive and helpful. And so um, to see those numbers growing is exciting. Um, big, huge work this last week on our food infrastructure continues to move forward at an astronomical pace. Um, tons and tons of work that's going into that, and most specifically, Wallapini 2. We finished the planting map for that. We photoshopped the planting maps so that now it's nice and clean and looks good. We'll put that up on the website as well. It's now up on our food um, harvesting and planting details page, and we added all of the list of everything that we're going to grow on there. And we formed a relationship with the company that is going to provide all of our apple trees for that structure. And I just want to give a shout out to this company because they are unbelievable. It's Century Farm Orchards. We don't even have his bio up on the website as of this moment, but we will this week. David at Century Farm Orchards is... In the speaking that I've done to him, he's an amazing individual. Um, his, that farm is called Century Farm Orchards because it's been in his family for over 100 years. He is one of only two recipients of the Calhoun um, Apple uh, Archive 
of, of rare and endangered and disappearing apple trees. There's only two places that you can buy these apples. Amazing. And actually, I'm because I'm supposed to go through the bullet points, I'm going to save the rest of that for later. Let me cover the rest of the stuff. Other things that we did, we updated our evolving sustainability page, which I want to talk about. We updated our four-phase strategies page, which I want to talk about. Then we updated our solutions that create solutions, creating models, solution creating models page. Uh, and we did a radio interview in this last week. And so, oh, and we finished our knowledge and wisdom component is finally done and up on the website for the Education for Life open source and free shared Education for Life program. And so that wraps up the complete curriculum component for the Education for Life program. And I want to talk about that too. So crazy cool stuff that got done in this last week. It's been very, very productive, lots of uh, forward movement. And I want to talk more about the details of all that stuff. And so uh, I'll cover the, the, the more tangible details first, which are the, uh, the gray water system for the Earthbag Village. I said I wanted to touch on that a little bit more. So um, the Earthbag Village is designed to be maximum affordable sustainability. And Earthbag, building with Earthbags is super affordable because you can ship Earthbags anywhere in the world very affordably. Building with Earth, obviously, Earth, dirt, is very, very cheap. And so you mix that with a stabilizer, and then when you're done, you have pretty much the equivalent of concrete walls, and uh, anybody can build these structures. And so the vermiculture bathroom system that we're designing to go with that earth bag village and the gray water processing system, we've now got the page up that describes what that is. And just so I can go into details here, as of right now, or what the plan is, how it's being designed, um, the specifics of this are that the gray water from the showers, and in this Earthbag village, the showers are communal shared shower spaces and shared bathroom spaces because it saves a huge amount of money on plumbing. Um, and we wanted to make this village as affordable as we possibly can. And we think that we've succeeded in doing that and that you can build housing for 100 people, more than 100 people, for less than the cost of a couple houses in California. And so that's our goal is to demonstrate an entire village that also can produce food, for less than the cost of a couple houses in California and will house 100 people. And so the uh, vermiculture bathroom and the shower page that is now up goes into the details of what the showers are going to look like, how the shower water, the hot, the recycled or the used hot water from the showers will travel into the central tropical atrium. And there's been some progress on 3D too, but I don't have an image for you. I'll show that next week. Uh, travels into the central tropical atrium and then it, that radiant heat, that heat will radiate out to help keep that tropical environment warm uh, at night. And so, uh, and then the vermiculture bathroom design are vermiculture trays, which is using worms to comp for composting. And their bathrooms, they're designed to separate out the liquid, take the solids, which is poo, and put it in the, uh, in the trays, separate out the liquids as gray water, and then that gray water will travel out the north end of the village and go through this gray water processing uh, natural gray water, which is a series of different ponds with plants that process all of that. And our goal is to provide, is to demonstrate an end result. We think that we can demonstrate an end result that will be drinking water. So that's what we're shooting for. And what we're, and so what Aaron Ponte is, is signed, has signed on with our project to do is to design that whole system. We've done a whole bunch of research into it. We're, we're very confident that it's totally possible. We just need to design the system. And so we're excited to have Erin on board, which is this is something that she wants to do with her landscaping uh, company is really design that out. And so that's what's happening. And then, oh, and additionally, that gray water system is designed. The, the county, our county said, hey, you know, you need to put in a traditional system because this is all one big experiment. So put in a traditional system and then you can run your experiment and we'll work with you. And if you can demonstrate that your experiment is safe and, and works, then, OK, that's great. Then you can build that way from that point forward. And so we said, all right, well, that's wonderful. Our goal is to expand the International Building Code with an open source blueprint and free shared plans that, that work, obviously. And we want it to be safe water, et cetera. And so, um, so our system, our vermiculture bathrooms, are actually a combination of a traditional septic, because that's the way we need to build them, and then vermiculture. And so what we can do is we have this backup sep septic system that's already designed in there so that we can use that while we're proving the whole vermiculture system and then once the vermiculture system has been proven and everybody's happy and we know that it works then we can completely phase out the traditional septic and all waste will be recycled and so and then the beauty of that is is you know even though once we prove it and prove that it works 
that's great for us, but we need a system that's going to work for counties that might not be okay with that. They might want their own proof, something separate from ours. And so this open source design is very exciting because it meets the guidelines of pretty much any county, and so others will be able to duplicate it right off the bat, and we can start gathering information and data as a global collaboration cooperative, working together on how to create a, create a better world uh, for everybody through systems just like this. And so, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So the other thing that I, wanted, I started to talk about, got excited, prematurely excited about, was the Wallapini 2. So um, Wallapini 2 is only 63 feet long by 32 feet wide. And through um, espalier planting, which is basically training trees to be small and to produce maximum fruit without growing huge, uh, we have designed it to grow over 140 different trees in one 63 by 32 foot wide wallapini. And that's what wallapini 2 is all about. And so if you want to see the planting plan for that, you can check out the link to the written blog or you can just go to, and there'll be a link there, or you can go to our, um, to our highest good food or the actual URL is uh, Wallapini and Aquapini Planting and Harvesting. You can go to our Wallapini and Aquapini Planting and Harvesting open source page. And it'll show you all the trees and everything that's going to be planted in there. And so when we were choosing everything that's going to go within that house, it's specifically designed to have a free zone. So a lot of trees need to have a certain period of days that are super cold to make them produce. And so we designed this house, unlike all the other houses, which are tropical houses and are going to be uh, maintained as tropical year-round, this house is designed to have those freezing days. And so in this house, we've put apricots, we've put figs, we've put guava, we have put um, tons of apples and melons and strawberries are also going to be in there just as ground cover as well. Pomegranate is going to be grown in that. And so our economic botanist, Michael, chose all of the trees and all of the plants that are going to go in there to represent maximum diversity. And this is all in alignment with our botanical garden plan. And so when we were choosing those, we looked all of the United States. We wanted to see where we could find the best grower, the best somebody that could provide the level of diversity that we were looking for to grow apples that you cannot buy anywhere anymore. And these, and that's when we came across our partnership with Century um, Farm Orchards and David. And we looked at his selection, everything that he has to offer, and the fact that he is carrying on the legacy of the Calhoun uh, archive of apples, only one of two people that's representing that. And we were ridiculously excited. Um, most people don't realize that the four or five apples that you get in the grocery store is not even 1% of what's out there. I mean, there are thousands of different types of apples, and a lot of these things have gone totally extinct. You know, now we have way less selection now than we used to, and people don't realize it. It seems like it's, well, maybe some people, I mean, a lot of people do, but I think most people don't realize that when you hear those statistics about a species is going extinct every 20 minutes, or, or um, that's for real. And a lot of it's our food supply. A lot of the foods and things that we eat now have become one type of potato, one type of corn, one type of apple. And so part of our highest good philosophy in our botanical garden model is to expand that. And so in Wallapini 2, and you can go to our website and check this out, we have not added the links and the descriptions yet. So all we have is a list of the apples as of this moment. But this week, we will start adding in the descriptions, and then we're going to add links to the Century Farm Orchards uh, descriptions of all the other apples. But we'll grow 50 different kinds, 50 different kinds of apples inside this one structure. And because it's a duplicable structure, other people will be able to build, grow 50 different types of apples, too. We'll grow over 40 different types of figs, and we just got an email back from the organization that we're going to be partnering with to provide that, uh, all those different types of figs as well and so man food diversity is a really cool thing and one of the things that we want to create with one community is we want to demonstrate that you know if people decide to take it into their own hands if their goal if their highest good philosophy and they're saying hey I want to create a better world where our idea of a better world is a world that has more food diversity it's
it's a world that has better tasting food. It's a world that has higher quality food. It has a world. It's a world that has fresher food. And so uh, these developments and this progress for Wallapini 2, that's it. That's it. And, uh, and the botanical garden model that we're creating and uh, the way that we'll be logging all of this and keeping track of it, it's an opportunity to really save some of these apples that are on the brink of extinction and you just don't think about plants like wow how could how could trees go extinct like that's not like they're being hunted and really they are and you don't realize it but whole orchards of trees have been just cut down and eliminated and so there are people on this planet that are preserving this stuff and we want to bring that to the mainstream because we think that people want higher quality food. We think that the time has come in our evolution as a species for people to have access to an apple that's specifically made for uh, baking or an apple that's specifically ideal for drying or an apple that's really ideal for storage. And so we're gonna grow them all and we wanna demonstrate, or at least 50 of them in this house, and we wanna demonstrate those differences to people. There's red fleshed apples out there. Did you guys know this? I mean, crazy, amazing, beautiful things. They're so diverse and different. So anyway, we're going to feature nine of the different apples of the 50 that we're growing on our website, and then we're going to link to David's website for all the rest of them. We're super, super excited about that. So um, Wallapini 2. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about was our updates to the major pages that we did. Oh, and our, mm -hmm. on our uh, Education for Life program. So we've finished all the curriculum. Education for Life program is open source and free shared education for the world's population. Anybody with a website can access this. It's designed to go hand in hand with the Khan Academy, which if you're not familiar with the Khan Academy, check them out. They are creating lesson plans that are phenomenal. What an amazing organization. We want to build an adjunct to that, something that works along with those lesson plans, which is more of a hands-on approach that then can use those learning resources and plug into our model for Education for Life. And so the Education for Life program is, just so how it sounds, is an education program designed for all ages, starting from birth until death, for people that are interested in learning and growing and expanding, and it's free shared and open source. And the way that we've designed it is we've got strategies of being, which are essentially great strategies of the, the best strategies of amazing leaders, teachers and communicators and so those are the basic foundations of being a teacher and a great communicator and then we have our curriculum for life which is everything that we would expect uh, that we see of value to the entire learning and personal growth and evolution process and uh, and that's gonna it's a global collaborative so the whole idea is to keep evolving this to cover everything so of course it's got the basics which are math and science and physics and uh, health and nutrition and this kind of stuff. And then it's also got more interesting topics, or I would say what, I would say more important topics than even than those, like, you know, curriculum for love and integrity and honesty and communication and family and all of these different types of things. And so the knowledge and wisdom page that we just completed was the final component of the Curriculum for Life, the entire Curriculum for Life section of the Education for Life program. And so now we're working on the strategies of being. Once we've got the strategies of being done, then we've got the Curriculum for Life. We've also got the strategies for learning, which are actual ways to teach the different curriculum. And then we've got teaching tools for life, which are ways, teaching tools and toys that can be added in and used with the strategies and the curriculum. And then next will be the lesson plans and the ultimate classroom. And so our whole purpose with the Education for Life program is to demonstrate a community-based education model. Wow, oh, there's a lot of noise outside right now. To create a community-based a community -based education model that can be launched with the whole teacher demonstration model that we're building as one community or any community or any village or any city that wants to duplicate this or a model that could be used within a homeschooling environment or a model that could be used to start a community-based school in any type of urban environment. I mean, the idea is, okay, this is what you need to do if you want to start your own community-based school that's going to meet or far exceed the traditional standards and traditional guidelines. So we're producing K-12 
kids that can ace SATs and ACTs and they can get into college and get jobs if that's what they want to do, that have the thinking outside of the box skills necessary to really not just achieve within the world, but to really contribute something, to make a real significant difference, not just to be a great student, but to be a student that really, really can do pretty much whatever they want in life, to open up as many doors as possible. And so, so this Education for Life program is all coming together right now. And, and so now that the Curriculum for Life page is done, that's exciting. And then the last thing that I reported on, and I did a radio show interview. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. I did a radio show interview this last week that talks about a lot of this stuff also. Um, but we also updated our Evolving Sustainability page, our four-phase strategy page, and our Solutions that Create Solution Creating Models page. And all of those pages go together. And they were updated because we've got some conversations that are being had with potential investors, um, and also just because we're in this process of simplifying our entire website now that the open source portals are being developed, etc. Um, we're in the process of simplifying our entire website, clarifying what our message is and what it is that we're doing. And we finally, as we finish these pages, they're done. You know, a lot of them have been rewritten two or three times because the website just grew and we migrated the website and we had all this different stuff that we did. And so in completing those three pages, or the reason why we updated those three pages, is because they're really the foundation of what it is that we're creating. You know, our goal is, as I said, is to teach people how to create a better world. And so our four-phase strategy, our evolving sustainability, and the solutions that create solution-creating models page, pages specifically describe all these different things. And the idea is this, and I think this is, we have the opportunity I think most people realize now that the resources exist on this planet right now to provide for every single human being on this planet. If money were to disappear, if we were no longer profit motivated, if our goal was just to take care of each other and to really provide abundantly for every single person on this planet, we absolutely could. We absolutely could. If money were to disappear, all the resources and everything that we have right now would still be here. And people ask the question, the most common question I get is, well, how will you keep people motivated? How would you still get everything done? Who's going to deliver the food? Who's going to do all these different things? And it's a really good question. And so the answer to that question is, the short-term answer to that question is teacher demonstration villages, cities, and communities. And that's what one community wants to create, is instead of trying to answer that question for humanity, let's answer that question for people who want to be self-sufficient. For people who say, hey, I really want to live with a group of people that takes care of each other and helps each other out and create abundance within that environment. And I believe that it's possible and I want to be a contributing member of it. I would like to be somebody that, that is a part of a team that's helping to create this amazing environment where I don't work a traditional job anymore. Instead, I work within a group of people like a family, cooperating, collaborating together, and we build our own homes, we produce our own food, we live off the grid, and so we don't have any energy bills. And that's what I would like to do. And so our four-phase strategy is to provide the roadmap and the template specifically for that. And in doing that, by demonstrating that's possible, and one community is meant to be the first model, although there's a whole bunch of amazing things that are happening right now. There's lots of people that are working on this idea and putting it together. Our goal, our purpose, and maybe what distinguishes us from everybody else is that our goal is to not only demonstrate a working model, but to specifically specifically create the open source project launch blueprints so anybody else that might just be thinking about getting started on this model or somebody that's already on the path and would like resources or somebody that has the money but doesn't have the labor would have a template to then follow and bring together the labor and they provide the money somebody else provides the labor and you can build teacher demonstration villages communities and cities anywhere in the world using our blueprints and so our four-phase strategy is to take everything that's already working in pieces all over the world right now, put it together in one place. And that's why you hear me talking about Wallapini 2, and why you hear me talking about these vermiculture bathrooms, and why you hear me talking about gray water processing systems and earth bag villages. This stuff is already being done in small pieces. It's not, it's not a new idea. Putting it together is a new idea. Doing it this big is a new idea. And open sourcing it is definitely a new idea. Because if I could find open source plans for everything that I'm doing right now, it would save me so much time. And so we're creating that. And that's the first phase of the strategy. The second phase of the strategy 
is to share it with people, is to say, hey, open source this and let people come and visit and see what it is that we're doing and get involved in it, right? To participate, to bring it all together in one place and say, hey, you can use this, take, take what it is that you want, use it the way that you want, and then to put that all out there. And as we bring this thing together and invite people to do it, we can then teach people what's necessary to build their own teacher demonstration communities, villages, and hubs, cities, and in so doing, create a self-replicating model because putting it all together, we have a, a social architecture model that goes along with that that provides what we feel most people will believe is a far superior way of living. You know, in our organization is purpose. We have a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, your organization is purpose on a 40-hour work week. How is that superior to what people are doing right now? And, so, and, and how is that a new model of living? Like, why will people want to duplicate that? And the reality of it is, is the model that we're creating, man, you could operate it on 20 hours if you wanted to. People could work 20 hours a week. You no longer have a commute. Your child care is right there on site. You have social architecture. You have meditation classes and live music and this whole recreational model. And, you know, all the different things that people are most often paying to take as classes are self-contained in one village and city model. You could operate that whole thing on about 20 hours per person a week. The reason why we're a 40 hour per week organization is because we're an open source organization. And the people involved in our organization are about giving. We're about putting the information out. We're about teaching other people how to do this. You know, and at least for me, my idea in, in bringing this whole thing together as the uh, facilitator of the project of a whole, as a whole is like, hey, let's bring together the people that aren't afraid of working 40 hours because we think this stuff is fun. We like it, you know? The idea of giving back and creating open source blueprints and putting that out there and watching somebody be able to build a duplicate village on everything that we're doing based on the resources and tools and tutorials that we create and then having them say, hey, we're not sure about this. How do we do that? Go, oh, we need to create a new tutorial. This is what our project's been doing now for a couple of years. Every single question that we get from the public gets integrated into the website and that's how we improve. So our team is a group of people that are into that people that like that we don't see this as a 40 hour work week we see it as 40 hours of awesome <laughs> and so um so when people say oh it's a 40 hour work week it's like yeah our project's probably not a good fit if you're not comfortable if you think that what we're doing is work but if you think that what we're doing is awesome and you want to be a part of it yeah our project's probably a good fit then you know if you think that what we're doing is something like wow I would like to be involved in world change like that. Man, we got tons of people on our team. We got a way bigger consulting and partnering team that are people that are just donating their time that won't even be moving out on the property with us than we do our actual pioneer team. Those people are just giving because they want to give. And so the pioneer team are people that want to take that to a whole new level and say, hey, we want to give as a lifestyle. We want to create an environment that where we, we don't really have any bills, you know, and because we don't have a commute and we all work from within this environment, we have actually more free time than a traditional 40-hour work week, but we're still uh, than a traditional model uh, where you're working a 40-hour job somewhere else because you have no commute, you're never bringing work home, etc. But then again, work is home. What we're doing, our purpose, which is not work, it's an instant retirement plan for those of us that think it's awesome, and I've already been doing this for a couple of years, is constantly working on creating open source blueprints and demonstrating the model works. You know, so the more fun and the more amazing the environment is that we can create, the more that will sell the environment, the more that will make the environment desirable for more people. And that's the whole point of the four-phase strategy is, hey, if we can demonstrate a more fulfilled way of living than most people are experiencing, and we can tell them, we can show them exactly how much time it's going to take, exactly how much money it's going to take, and give them everything they need to duplicate that, we believe that the environment will become self-replicating because it provides what people want. And that's how we can make a big difference in the world. How do you want to create a better world? Man, give people what they want, package it in a way that creates, specifically creates a better world just by its existence. And because people want it, they will create that. And so that's what we're doing. And we invite anybody who's interested in joining us to, by all means, please participate, get involved. You know, easiest way to help us out is just reading our pages and liking them through sharing them through social media to get the word out. Most people don't realize that pretty much every person on this planet 
at this point is connected to every other person by somewhere between 7 and 10 degrees of separation. In the developed world, it's more like 4 or 5 degrees of separation, meaning you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows the president. You know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows Oprah, you know, who knows Richard Branson, who knows Bill Gates, who knows whoever, you know, famous people. Well, a lot of these famous people are looking to make a big difference. Uh, these people of influence are looking for projects just like ours. You know, share the things that you're interested in. Share the things that you support. It's the easiest way that you can help us out. Other way, get involved. We're always looking for new pioneer members, people that want to join our project and move on to the property and build everything that we're designing. Get involved that way. Or consider getting involved as a partner or a consultant or consider just contacting us saying, hey, I'd just like to help out. How can I do that? We have lots of different things that we could use help on from blogging and just writing, lots of writing and editing. Mm -hmm. We're also creating a whole open source archive uh, website that is like the Wikipedia of sustainability and it's purposed specifically just for open source and free shared resources that teach people how to improve sustainability in their life. Everything from how to do a home energy assessment to how to plant a tree, that kind of stuff. So we're creating that as well. I mean, there are so many different areas. Our organization is doing everything we can to create a sustainable planet for everyone. That's what we're about. That's what one community is. We're already one community, all of us, every single person on this planet. We're one community, one family. And so um, we're looking for people who agree with that idea. We're looking for people who want to be a proactive member of this family and we got lots of ways that we can use help so or just follow us just keep following our progress subscribe to our YouTube channel even that is really helpful you know it's great it's helpful if for no other reason it's a cool morale booster you know to see people going yeah we want to know what you're doing we love that and as we continue to grow as we continue to evolve as we continue to put this information out there you know every little bit of support helps and so there's so many ways to participate and with that I will wrap up. I will say thank you, as always, for everything. Until next week, our next weekly report. This was number 21. I'm signing off. Thanks for following our project. Uh, we appreciate you, and we will keep on keeping on. Thanks, everyone.